This might honestly be one of the best retro gaming systems I've built so far. And let me tell you that Fun Art Star Team by Bob Moraine Retro really brings this whole build to life. Gaming wise, this system plays everything up to PlayStation 2 really well, but what surprised me the most is how far it actually goes. I tested Steam, original Xbox, Xbox 360, and even some lighter PlayStation 3 titles, and yeah, this little box can do more than you expect. But before we get started though, quick disclaimer, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I don't promote or encourage piracy in any form. All game shows are either legally owned, backups or used purely for demonstration purposes. Always follow your local laws and use software and games you legally own. Hey, what's going on everybody? Badger DI back here again, and with gaming getting more expensive every single year, today we're taking a look at a super budget friendly Bato setup build using a HP Elite Desk 705 G4 Mini. I managed to pick this one up on eBay for just under £90, and it came with 8 gigs of RAM and the power supply included. Now knowing how important dual channel RAM is, especially for Ryzen systems, I went ahead and added another 8 gig Samsung stick, bringing us to 16 gigs total. And trust me, that makes a big difference for emulation. And if you're still here, make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing, it really helps the channel grow. For the initial setup, I definitely recommend having a keyboard and mouse handy, it just makes life easier at the start. On the software side, I'm running the latest version of Bato Serra, installed using Balena Etcher on a 500GB SSD, plenty of space for the games I'll be testing today. Controller-wise, Bato Serra is incredibly flexible, you can use wired or Bluetooth controllers, pretty much anything you already have. In my case, I'm using the EZSMX X05 controller with the USB dongle. For media and quick navigation, I also keep a mini wireless keyboard or air mouse remote nearby. But honestly, this system is built around controllers and you can navigate almost everything just using that. Works perfectly fine. Before we jump into gaming, I do want to mention that Kodi comes pre-installed in Batocera. Paired with a Jellyfin server and maybe a custom Kodi team, this actually turns into a really solid media center as well. There are loads of Kodi modes and skins out there, you just need to find the one that fits your setup best. YouTube is also available here using the TV version and with stats for nerds enabled, I can say it runs really well. If you're someone who uses their gaming setup as a media box too, like I do, this is a really nice bonus. And like with most Batocera builds, I installed RGSX here as well. That gives you access to additional scripts, tools and utilities that make managing and expanding your system much easier, especially if you're like tweaking and customizing things. Before we get into gameplay, let's quickly go over the specs so we know what to expect. This is an HP Elidesk 705 G4 Mini, powered by an AMD Ryzen 5 Pro 2400G, that's 4 cores, paired with 16 gigs of RAM. For graphics, we're using the integrated Radeon Vega 11, which is actually pretty strong for emulation and even some light PC gaming. For a small, quiet and affordable system, this is a really solid combo. Steam has been getting a lot of attention lately, especially with the, all the talk around Steam machines. I installed Steam using the unofficial Batocera add-ons, and it boots straight into big picture mode. It might show that there is no Ethernet connection at first, but don't worry, networking works just fine. Here we're playing Blasphemous, 
a punishing 2D action platformer with strong Metrovidia and Soul-like elements. Performance here is excellent, smooth gameplay, no stutters and feels right at home on this system. Emulation-wise, Mega Drive, N64 and all the systems all run flawlessly here. Moving up to GameCube, this is Capcom Millionaire Fighting. The games run smoothly, controls feels responsive and performance is rock solid. Exactly what you want from a fighting game. Moving over to the original Xbox, here we have Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time. The game runs really well, animation are smooth and overall performance is very playable on this hardware. Next up, Xbox 360 emulation, here we run in Crash, Mind of a Mutant. I did lose audio in this capture, but gameplay wise the game is totally playable. Load times are a bit longer, but once you're in the game, performance is surprisingly solid for a system like this. Starting with classics, PlayStation 1, here's Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, as expected, PS1 runs flawlessly. PSP also runs great, here's LEGO Batman, smooth gameplay and no issue at all. Moving up to PlayStation 2, we run in Terminator 3 Redemption. Performance is solid and very playable. And finally, PlayStation 3, this is where things get more demanding. Here we're running Rayman Legends, which is a lighter PS3 title. The Elite Desk does handle it, but the system does get warm, likely due to the shader compilation. Still, the fact that this even runs is impressive.
So overall for the price, size and performance, this HP LE Desk Batocera build turned out way better than I expected. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe and let me know in the comments what do you think about this build. And would this be a good Bazai build? As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.